Hi, my name is Nate, and this is my wife, Kalechi. And this is Maxwell and Ellie Rose. And we are, are Vessel, Vessel Church. Church. <laughs> Kalechi and I are part of the Building Blocks ministry for young families and children. Yes, we love our Building Blocks ministry. We get to do a lot of fun activities for the children. We do story time. We do play groups. We do bounce house parties in a safe and welcoming environment. Max, what's your favorite thing to do with your church friends? Play baseball. Play baseball. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, Max, some of the other kids are the same baseball team. Me and other daddy here at the church, we get to coach together. They get to make new memories and new friends, while Clayton and I get to build relationships with other moms and dads. We love getting to be part of this church family, and that is why. We, we are Vessel Church! Hey, welcome guys to Vessel Church. So awesome to have you with us today in a beautiful day in Western New York. And wherever you are, I hope it's beautiful there too. It's uh, such a great time of year, a celebratory time. You know, we just came through Juneteenth where all of our African-American friends and family have celebrated their freedom. And it's a time this weekend where America will be celebrating its freedom. And you know, they, they came to America for freedom of religion. And to be able to do this today is uh, just something we all need to be grateful for. So we're gonna get into the Word of God today. This month is Accountability Month in our church and this lesson today it's going to be called get it together and we're going to start off because we're going to be inspired by what Jesus did you know we're thinking about the freedoms that we're celebrating but the ultimate freedom came through Jesus freedom from sin for all humanity equally and that is something to celebrate eternally in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 as a matter of fact when Jesus was starting out in his ministry he quotes an Isaiah scripture and he says this the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Jesus came to bring us that incredible freedom. And we get to celebrate that every day as Christians. And so today we're gonna to talk about our need to get it together, to get our life together spiritually, to be able to imitate our Lord, to imitate his heart and what he was able to do to make a difference in this world. So I want to begin here in Luke chapter 13. It's one of my favorite scriptures. There's so many sermons that can be preached from it. I'll try to keep it to one today. But in Luke chapter 13, it's a time in Jesus' life where he's out there, he's preaching the word. Um, he's gotten known around and he's definitely causing a little bit of a ruckus in the city. And so this is what happens in Luke 13, beginning in verse 31. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, now let's stop right there. The Pharisees were the Jewish religious leaders. And a lot along the way, Jesus was challenging their hypocrisy. So they weren't very pleased with him either. So, so some of them came to him and they said, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. Herod was the Jewish king at the time. So these Pharisees are coming to him. Maybe they had their own motives for wanting to scare him away, but they're like, look, Herod wants to kill you. Now listen, when the king wants to kill you, if that's true, there's a good chance you're going to be killed. And so they're coming here and I can see the devil working to thwart Jesus, to, to try to get him off of his purpose and his course and his plan. But look what happens here. Jesus replied, go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You know, so many great things in here, but what we have to see is Jesus was clear on his purpose and his plan, and it was driven by his passion for humanity. And if you're gonna get something from today, leave with this. Purpose and a plan powered by passion can change the world. And that's what drove Jesus. He, he hurt for the people. He wanted to gather them under his wings, like, like the chicks under there. It's a way of protection. And he, he wanted to do that for all of humanity, and specific, specifically right there with his own people in Jerusalem. 
and yet they turned away and his heart was hurting. You see, everything that drove his purpose and his plan was his passion, his heart for people, his love. And so we can see literally that even as the devil's trying to thwart him, trying to make him feel selfish and scared for his own life, he said, you go tell that fox, I'll heal today and tomorrow and I will reach my goal. Therein lies something really, really incredible to look at and to always remember. Jesus had a goal. He knew what his purpose was. He had a plan. He had a goal he was striving for and he would not be knocked off that course. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus says, the son of man came to seek and save the lost. In Mark chapter one, verse 38, he goes, I have to go preach to other villages and towns. That is why I have come. All throughout his life, he, he, he knew what he was supposed to be doing. It was clear because a purpose and a plan powered by passion can change the world. And he did, and he changed it for eternity for those who follow him. And so it's time that we get it together. You know, if you've ever been told that, I'm sure everyone's been told that one time or another, either by your parents, you know, they, when you're going through a hard time in school or you're just not doing what you need to and your parents are like, hey, get it together. Or maybe it's your boss at work, or maybe a teammate on one of your sports teams is like, yo, you need to get it together. You know, and I think for us, most important thing is that spiritually we get it together. That we know our purpose, we get our plan, empowered by the gratitude for Jesus dying for us, we can change the world. But we gotta have that spiritual plan. You know, in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 26, the Apostle Paul said, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. You know, he, he's like, I don't run aimlessly. I have an aim. I have a goal. I know I am living. And so it's, it's not for us to run aimlessly as Christians. We need to know our purpose and our plan and have a focus and a goal like Jesus, like Paul. You know, I remember when uh, our church football team first started out a lot of years ago. And in the first few years, we weren't doing real good. We got beat pretty bad, right? But we set our goals on the top team. We set our, we're like, man, we're gonna, we're gonna work. We're gonna imitate them. We're, we were hitting the gym. We were pushing each other. We were learning. We were studying film. And it took a while. But eventually, we beat them for the championship. They had won seven years in a row. And we beat them because we had a goal and we pushed each other and we worked it patiently and it led to victory. And that's what we should all want spiritually for our lives, a great spiritual plan to lead to victory. Paul knew his purpose and his plan. He was imitating Jesus. And so in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, you know what he tells all of us? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. It's like so that we see clearly that we're to imitate, we're to have those goals, you know? I think a lot of people feel like, well, I feel like we just need to be led by the Spirit. You know, you don't want to have goals or this and that. And, and I think that's something interesting to really think about and what we have to learn. Because I don't believe that being led by the Spirit means running aimlessly. Jesus wasn't running aimlessly. He had a goal and a plan. Paul wasn't running aimlessly. He had a clear goal and a plan. So I believe if we're supposed to imitate them, we should also have that. Now I'll get to what the Spirit has to do with it in a little bit, but first of all, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6, it says, We know that we've come to know him if we obey his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we're in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. I mean, again, we're called to imitate Jesus, to be able to have that purpose and a plan powered by passion so we can change the world, get ourselves to heaven and change the world around us. But I guess the big question is, do we know spiritually how to get it together? I guess it starts with that. Do you know the Bible? Do you know about Jesus' life? Do you really know what he lived, how he lived? Do you know what the Bible actually taught? Do you know your purpose and plan? Because if you don't know the Bible or how Jesus actually lived, it's hard to really know your purpose and plan. It's hard to have those spiritual goals because you should have them. You should, you should be able to have the plan, know what they are, know how to achieve them biblically. So you can make a schedule for what we can control. 
Have you, have you put it out there? If you do have goals, have you put it out to your family and friends to hold you accountable? Because it's different, right, when you do that. When it's just inside of you, it's like, it's not a big deal if you don't really follow through. But if you put it out to people and now they're asking you about it, it gives you a little accountability to motivate you, right? Nice, we gotta get it together. And purpose and a plan powered by passion can change the world. And so we need to be able to do this. A few, a few scriptures I'll throw out there. I love the Proverbs. This helped me in getting the spiritual plan for my life. Proverbs 20, 18 says, plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. Well, we better know that we're in a war with the devil every day. And so we need to seek advice. We need to seek advice from people who have been successful spiritually, who have experience that can mentor us, we can learn from. Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. It's good to get advice from spiritual people who have had success in their life spiritually. And then finally, Proverbs 16, three says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. So we make our plans, what we believe spiritually is good, and then we put it before God and he establishes them, which means he can change them if he wants to. You know, this is what it means to be spirit led too, is that we need to have plans, we need to establish some goals, but the spirit will guide us within those. Sometimes it's not how we expect it to go, but we have to do our part of seeking advice, putting it before God. You know, my friend James Terhune is, uh, man, such an inspirational guy, especially in this area. The dude is like so smart, so talented, but he's always getting advice. He's always calling me or some of his other friends, more experienced guys, and asking advice on decisions he's making, things he's going to do. And then he'll put it in his prayer. He's got a prayer box and he'll write, he'll put the prayer in the prayer box. Then he'll put it before God. And this guy has incredible successes in his life. And I believe it's because he does these things because his purpose and a plan driven by passion leads him to victory. You know, in 2020, we, uh, we began the year before COVID and our theme was breakthrough. And we were excited as a church, man, we're gonna do new things, we're gonna break through. We had all these plans and things. It was a breakthrough, not how we expected though. It's like, thank you, COVID. Came in and overturned the world, right? Everybody had their 2020 plans and all that. And it was a breakthrough, but not how we planned it. So we, we pivoted, we went with God, we followed him. And God led us to some amazing things. I mean, we got to build an online ministry that we hadn't had before. We got to work at other areas of our spirituality that we hadn't. So God led us and we followed. Now, sometimes we make plans and it goes almost exactly like we plan it, but you gotta follow the spirit within it, but it's still good to make those plans. As our church, Vessel Church, we wholeheartedly make plans based on our purpose, and then we let the spirit guide us into where we need to go within that, the best path, and we do it with passion. So today, we need to get it together spiritually. And again, remember, purpose and a plan powered by passion leads to victory. I'm gonna leave us as we take communion together with Colossians 3, verse 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You know, as we take communion, it's interesting that it is called the passion of the Christ when he died on the cross because he did do this out of passion for us. In John 19, 30, Jesus says, it is finished. Well, what's the it? Ah, again, we see that Jesus had a goal, his purpose and his plan driven by his passion for us. He could say it is finished. It was that goal. It was that purpose that God had given him. And when he went to the cross, he did it. And he brought us the most incredible freedom, freedom from sin for all humanity equally. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can have the forgiveness from Jesus, the freedom from sin that his blood brought us. And I pray, Father, that it would inspire us to get it together, to be able to come up with our purpose and plan, and then allow, allow our gratitude for him dying on the cross to propel us forward into victory. We're so grateful, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Guys, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you're inspired. I hope that you'll have a safe weekend. I hope you'll remember the freedom that Jesus gave us. We're so grateful for you guys tuning in. Again, please let us know where you're from in the comments. And we'd like to know and hear from you. Thank you for your support. Love you guys. See you soon. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday here on Vessel Church YouTube channel. We go live every single Sunday. So please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on everything that we do. We'll see you guys really soon. Enjoy your week. And please remember that when you're in our house, we hope you feel 